Now, Eddie Murphy has spoken out about being judged for having ten children. His kids are by five different women. The youngest is a baby and the oldest is 30. And he says that while men think he's crazy for having such a large brood, women find it sexy. Sexy, Trisha. <laughs> oh, really? I wonder who he's talking to. Um, I remember I've, I've, I've actually met um, Mr Murphy. Mr on... Murphy. Is he Mr. sexy? Murphy. Um... <laughs> <laughs> We were on holiday in Hawaii, and in those days he was with Melanie Brown and um, Mel B. Mel B. Yeah. And um, um, we were there as well at the same time. Um, he's a an interesting character. <laughs> Did I find? Do I find a man who's capable of spreading his seed far and wide sexy? Nah. <laughs> um, I suggest the sexiness for some women might be. Um, not centre trouser, but to the right, <laughs> i.e. the hip pocket. I, I mean, that might sound cynical. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, but if you are going to have a child with someone who's got loads of money and profile, you know... Yeah, yeah it's interesting. I mean, uh, I think that is more probably his own perception. That that's, oh, that's definitely. That's what he's <laughs> hoping it is. I mean, it's, you cannot imagine a woman ever seeing the same thing, you know? I... <laughs> I, I definitely feel sometimes that women are judged if they have children from with multiple partners. How many so children? With I have dads? three children, and they've all got different dads. And I definitely. All right, Trish. I'm joking, darling. I'm talking to someone who's oh, no. been married three I'm times. Joking, I'm you know? joking. But, but the, it's one of those. But the things, implication isn't it? is that you're, you know, I'm, fast and loose. Have you? Yeah, had, I've had. <laughs> Negative comments yes. directly. Yeah, I've read them and about I would you. say I would say that for men, <laughs> oh, Trisha, what's going on? <laughs> no, I think I thought it was really unfair, but I have read that yeah. about you. That that. It, it, God, you've got some clangers today, Trisha. <laughs> <laughs> I hope my mouth Give me. her a shovel now. <laughs> there is definitely people out there who find it offensive and, and offensive. Yeah, because I think that don't don't forget that not long ago people were forced to stay in relationships that they weren't happy mm. in because society didn't yeah. allow them to say I'm not happy and. We've only just coming into a, a, oh, and a, women didn't have their own money. Yeah, yeah. or yeah, or many many rights in in all fairness. And I think we're only just coming into a place relatively freshly where women can say, actually, I'm not going to stand by that, and I think it's better for my children to leave this relationship. And then they're allowing themselves to move on with life and have more children without feeling guilty about it. So I think that a lot of the negativity comes from really old-fashioned mm. views. Well, they, like Ulrika, they call her like. You hear phrases like four by four and things like that. It's disgusting. Nobody ever says that about a man, like Rod Stewart and, and mm. Mick Jagger. Mm. Nobody ever yes. talks about how many kids they've had. Well, they yeah. do, but it's much more of a kind of nudge, Viral. nudge, wink, wink, you know, yeah. all this sort of... Going. So, I mean, the most important thing in all of this, though, is your family, your children, how you feel and, how, you know, how, how you manage it. So, I mean, do you have conversations w within the family with the boys? Uh, oh, my God. It's gorgeous with that child. Much. Both all those boys. I, we, we're a very open family. I think that it's always complicated when you're in a, a blended family and when, you, you know, there are different dynamics. However, they're all brothers and they're all my children and they will always be just family. There's Ooh. nothing else to it. We have... If, so, when Joe and I decided to have Rex, we had to have a conversation with the children first to make sure that they were comfortable with that. What do you mean first? Well, so before At what stage? we started before... trying... Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we sat down with all of our children and spoke about the notion of having brothers and sisters and more to the family because it just didn't feel right to go on ahead without making sure that they were happy. And that's something I don't think that many people realise you have to do. You have to have those yeah. conversations and... But how did they react? Well, luckily, yeah. they were happy because we, we went ahead and had a baby. Um, no, luckily, they were really excited about it. My, my boys were really excited and, you know, we just had to have a big, wide conversation and see how everybody felt. But if one of them had been really upset and said, no, Mum, no, 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 I no... I would have waited until they were happy. And would you? And if it didn't happen, then it didn't happen. Yeah, because, listen, I, was, I feel so privileged to have two children already in my life who are just 
you know, I'm so lucky. I'm so grateful for that. And yes, I always wanted more children, and I expressed that to all of my friends and You're family. Making me cry here. But oh, it's so emotional. Oh, you know, so if, emotional. If, if my children that I already had, who I was lucky enough and privileged enough to already have, if that would have made their life miserable or affect them in a negative way, no, I, I wouldn't have gone ahead and oh. changed that. You're an amazing mum, Stacey, you are. One more. Don't clap me. You are. You are done no. Listen, you know what? You just... I, I would never knew... I didn't know you went through that, but actually, for you to have a baby, you had to... You know, you did all of that. It's, it's so thoughtful. It's and it's so considerate, you I know. I think most people in I that think yeah, I think, do, yeah, you know, yeah. have those conversations. Yeah. It's like you, you know, when you meet a partner after you've had children. Yeah, you have those conversations do. Really quickly. Do you want yeah. kids? Do you want this? Do you want that? Yeah. But how got... much do you consult your children in big decisions in your life? I mean, as you were saying, Trisha, I did when when I met my. Um... The, the, the husband that I last divorced. <laughs> I was saying so bad when I say that. Um, when I first met, he asked me to marry him very, very quickly. And um, my older daughter, Billy, would have been about six, I think. And I asked her, I said, how would you feel if? And she said, no, mummy, no. And yeah. so I said, no, that's it. I said, sorry, no, that's not. And then he kept on asking. And I feel guilty now in hindsight because I think if you go back and keep asking a child the same thing, they'll they'll basically say what they... Yeah, they, they know that you want them to say. Yeah. Mm. And in hindsight, I should have listened to her. But, <laughs> I, I, well, no, I mean, and it, it, it is difficult because um, when you've been a single mum, as you have, your older ch child becomes very, very protective mm. of you. Mm. So you need to take that into consideration when making decisions because they almost feel like... They think they're kind of like a partner or yeah. a warrior. It's me and mummy against the world. So you've got to be very careful about how you say, no, you, you can be a child again. It's safe to be a child again. And if it subsequently goes wrong, they come back at you and say, you know, I was right. It wasn't safe to be a child again. So it's, it's, yeah. it's a very it's a long conversation. dynamic because also, you, you know, there are those... There were complicated relationships again still. You know, when my mum and dad split up, my sister wasn't happy about my dad meeting somebody else. Mm. And it took her a very, him a very long time to win her over almost. But it, it didn't stop him from falling in love with my stepmom, who he adores. So time is a massive issue. Yeah. You know, even if they say no at the beginning, it doesn't mean that it's not going to get mm. easier. It means no yeah. not at that time. Yeah. Well, and also that they know that they're being considered yeah. and, and they are to, part yeah. of the, the process, you know, and it may not ultimately be the outcome that they said that they want at that time, but the fact that they are part of the conversation and that you're working at making it good for people. <laughs> I mean, how much would you... Consult. Well, well, for you, it's more about yeah. keeping them the same, isn't it? It is, because when, when we decided to adopt Tamara, I mean, Zach was two, and, and we were guided very much by our social workers, because in this country, they've done a lot of analysis on how to bring adopted children into a family and just blend and everything's fine. So we had to ask Zach, well, not ask him, but it was like, Zach, we're having a baby sister. Yeah, he's only two. And, yeah, but he yeah. kind of got used to it. But for Steve and I, as parents, I mean, they're both our children, um, and Tamara was... a you know, she's four days old when I adopted mm. her. But for us, we just want to make sure that at no point in Amara's life she, will she ever turn round and say, well, of course, you know, of course he's done well because he's your birth child and I'm... He oh, got excellent. You know, and, and that is the fear that, as a parent, you always have. And I, and I, and I hope to God it never, ever happens to us because we, we treat them both with so much love. They're, uh, you know, I feel like I've given birth to Amara anyway, but it's, it's you, you are consciously always making sure that you, you keep them the same and, and that they're both equally happy.